Sarah from the Imagination Station is in here and it has an indicator flower demonstration that is on table. Yeah, so we're going to start out with our safety gear today, um, but we're talking about acids, bases, and indicators. Oh. Drop the glove. Uh, drop the glove. That's important for today's safety. Um, but what we're going to do is actually um, kind of go through and learn how acids, bases, and indicators work together. Okay. Um, so what I've got here in my first beaker is actually just some water. And I've added a little bit of an indicator called phenothaline. Um, now, in the presence of a base, phenothaline turns really bright pink. Okay. So I'm going to let you add a base to Actually, will you be my stirrer? Sure. Okay. So we're going to add some sodium hydroxide, and you can see that it instantly changes. So previously, when it was clear, it was um, kind of pH neutral, maybe somewhere around a 7 or slightly more acidic. Um, but now we've got this beautiful pink. So that means that um, right now we're probably somewhere between an 8 and a 10 on the pH scale. Okay. All right. But what's cool about this type of chemistry is it's actually reversible. Right. Um, so we can counteract that by adding an acid to it. So I've got a little bit of hydrochloric acid, and we're going to put a few drops in there. And while you're stirring, it's going to kind of mix together. We're going to add our acid, and you can see it's starting to lighten up. I think we need just a little bit more. Whoa. Oh, yeah, there we go. So now we've taken it back somewhere down around neutral, neutral or slightly more acidic. Um, and we could keep doing this all day. We could add another base to it, that sodium hydroxide, make it pink again, switch it back and forth, which is pretty cool. Very cool. All right. Now, this is something that you probably can't do at home. I don't think a lot of people have hydrochloric acid probably in the pantry. Probably for good reason. <laughs> but what you can do is make your own indicator. Um, red cabbage actually has great indication okay. properties. Um, so this is actually red cabbage juice. And you can boil down leaves on your stove at home and take that um, juice and use it to test things. I better put a little bit more back in there. Okay. Um, so this one we're going to use as our control. Okay. And then this one we're going to add stuff to to see if we can see some nice color change. Okay. So I'm going to let you do it this time. So go ahead and add some sodium hydroxide. I'll be the stirrer since it's your birthday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So you can actually add a little bit more. And you can see, actually really close, this one's kind of turned to like a really nice dark blue color. Right, it has. Yeah, so that means that we have made it uh, more basic Base. by adding that sodium okay. hydroxide. Very good. So if you want, we can switch again. And I'll let you put the acid in. All right. So I'll keep stirring. And as those mix together, um, hopefully we'll be able to reverse the effects of that base that we put in there. And I see it's starting to change. Look at that. And it's Can you see it? headed back, yeah? It's kind of hard to see on TV, isn't it? There we go. Yeah. Um, so, pretty cool chemistry. Now, like I said, this is something you could try at home. And what I like about this is you can test all kinds of things around your house. Try maybe window cleaner or vinegar or milk. See what happens. Lemon juice. Lemon juice is an excellent one. Um, but this is really cool. And this chemistry is used by gardeners when they plant their hydrangeas. Really? Yeah, because the color of a hydrangea is significantly changed by the type of environment that it's grown in. So the soil it's grown in. Exactly. OK, because I've heard mm -hmm. gardeners and people you say, oh, you know, my crop wasn't very good this year because right. the soil uh, it was too uh, acidic or yes. too high in acid. Yeah, so okay. um, hydrangeas actually have something called an anthocyanin, which is a water-soluble component Component, and it changes based on if the soil is acidic or basic. And look at this. You brought some flowers in I for did. us this morning, didn't I did. you? Yes. So um, I've created these hydrangeas. I actually made them out of coffee filters. And I treated them with an indicator, just like what we saw okay. in our first two experiments. So I'm going to let you spray them. So you are adding a base to them. And we've got a beautiful pink one two pink ones, a nice purple one. And what's happening is the base that you're applying to it is reacting with that indicator. So our pink ones actually have something called phenothaline that's making them pink. And our blue one is the result of oh, thymothaline. But just like our other experiments, maybe you want white hydrangeas. We can actually switch. If you want to spray those again, you can add some. Okay. Um, Again, you're adding hydrochloric acid, and what's going to happen is that it will counteract and actually start to change your flowers back to their original color. 
So it's some pretty cool chemistry, like I said. Big, big for gardeners, they use this a lot. And some things you can do at home, some things you might see at the Imagination Station. Um, we do have little scientist workshops open on the website, so you can register for those, and they start in March. So definitely check that out and get registered. A little scientist workshop. The yep. easy way for the kids to get involved with science and it's magic before your eyes. Except exactly. not quite magic, it's science. Right. All right, Sarah, really <laughs> appreciate that one. Stay with us more. WTO 11, your day is back in just a moment.